Uh, today on Free Field Training, we are doing a live stream. If you're watching this over on YouTube after the fact, you missed the live stream, but you can always go down and click the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you have the opportunity to win things on our live streams. Today I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks for directing traffic right up yonder, and I'll also be doing the drawing from last month's police equipment giveaway, which was a sling bag and a complete duty belt kit. Also our giveaway from Instagram, which was a shield box and flashlights and all sorts of other police equipment in there. And I'm also going to be giving some things away live on YouTube and over on the Instagram live stream. They're also watching right now. And we're also going to be setting up the giveaways for next month. So lots of things to do all at once, but instead of just making a video about giveaways, I figured I would also do one about directing traffic and some tips and tricks about directing traffic and not getting yourself hurt. So if you are watching live, leave some comments and questions on those Instagram and YouTube live streams so I have something to talk about when we are done with our educational content. And then after all of that, we're going to get to the giveaways. Stick around for all of that to see uh, both YouTube and the long term, what you can win there, and on the live stream so you have an opportunity to get in on our live giveaways. I've got a $100 gift certificate uh, to Safe Life Defense Body Armor Company, and I also have uh, the Olight Fryer, a pretty cool little uh, duty flashlight that we did a video on a couple weeks ago called uh, the Olight Fryer is a Bad Police Duty Light. Kind of a tongue-in-cheek comparison to the Fryer to other police duty lights because it's more of a multi-tool type of thing. Hope you guys like it. Uh, this video is sponsored by all sorts of different companies. Since it's my monthly giveaway, you should know Olight sends me this stuff for free. Shieldbox sends me this stuff for free. If you like coffee, check out Hollow Point Coffee. There's links for all of this stuff down in the description. Safe Life Defense, there's this coupon code down below that says you 10%. Uh, Guardian Angel Device, we're going to be talking about them a little bit. Uh, you can see, you can get a free accessory and free shipping if you use the coupon code down in the description. So it's sponsored by all of those different companies. Just so you know, I've got lots of sponsors on the channel, lots of equipment companies sending me stuff, but what's important is that you know how to not get run over by a car. So let's get straight to that right now. So as my first training officer told me about directing traffic, the most important thing is don't get hit, but we have to break that down to a few things. We're going to talk not just about the basics of directing traffic, but I want to give you some tips and tricks that people don't normally get from those basic instructional videos or the basic training or from the police academy. So if you're coming out and doing this on your own and you've got a pretty good idea just from what people tell you what you're supposed to be doing, we're going to give you some tips and tricks that make it a little easier to figure out exactly how to not get run over and how to be more efficient when you're directing traffic, especially at night because that's when most people are getting hit because traffic can't see you. So let's talk about traffic not being able to see you. The most important thing at night is your backdrop and guys don't understand, we talked about this a little bit in previous directing traffic videos and that is even if you're wearing blaze orange, if your backdrop is blaze orange, which we've seen that with the, the lime green, lime green vests, and then somebody says, well, we should make the ambulances lime green, and then you're standing out directing traffic in front of an ambulance, and now the lime green vest doesn't do you any good. You have to understand your backdrop. The backdrop's extremely important during the day. If you're wearing all white and it's snowy, that's going to be a problem. If you're wearing dark blue and it's dark out, that's going to be a problem. That's a problem for me, that's a problem for you, that's a problem for a lot of people. Most fire and police department uniforms are some sort of blue. Lots of them are a dark blue at night that blends right into the background of everything else. Our real issue with backdrop and what kind of spawned on the idea of this video was <clears throat> I see a lot of state troopers at night in my area, especially the Indiana State Police, who don't seem to understand that if your lights are flashing behind you and you're standing in front of the lights, nobody can see you. So for instance, if we're over on the side of the road, we've got, let's say we've got our squad, I have this pre-set up for our first scenario, and we've got traffic is coming at us this way, and say this is Interstate Highway and this traffic is coming at us at 60, 65, 70, around here more like 80, 85 miles an hour, and we've got our squad either on the shoulder of the road or blocking a lane of traffic, but especially blocking a lane of traffic because there's cars that are coming that way anyway that have to merge over to not hit us, right? We want this person to merge over this way. The lights in the lane of traffic are a pretty good indication that that lane of traffic is over. A traffic director, which are getting to be less and less common of things, but traffic director on car is a great way to tell people, hey, you need to get over. What's not effective is if you put yourself here 
and take your flashlight and point people toward that way of traffic or stand in front of your car with the lights behind you and go, nobody can see that you're there. You're doing nothing except making yourself a big bullseye and you're going to get smushed between this car who's blinded by your lights or by your flashlight that you're shining in their eyes and the back end of your own car. If one of these people is drunk, they're looking at those lights, they're going to slam right into the back of you. You do not want that. You have to understand, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but you have to understand how reflectivity works. Reflectivity only works when the headlights are shining at you, but it's not as bright as the headlights themselves. So if you've got your overhead lights on, it's going to blur out any reflective stuff that you're wearing. It's going to blur out your little you know, shoulder light thingamabobbers that you can wear on your shoulder, it's going to blur out all of that because the lights on your car are significantly brighter than the stuff that you're wearing. That reflective strip that's reflecting back the headlights at traffic, people are not going to see it if you're standing in this position directly behind your car where we've got all of those high intensity Gen 3 LEDs flashing out back at them. Another thing to think about on the highway, and here's something I see a lot of people mess up, is what exacerbates this situation is if you park your squad facing traffic. So now you've got your headlights pointing at traffic. And not just your headlights, that would be kind of bad, but normally it's the wig wagging and, and flashing high beams that are the problem. We got our high beams flashing at traffic. You are legitimately blinding all the people that are barreling at you at 75 miles an hour and then getting upset because your headlights are shining at traffic, and then you're try standing here trying to direct people to go and make a U-turn on the highway to turn them around the other direction. These people can't see you, and so you've only got the distance between when they clear the cone that your headlights is creating to where you're at for them to decide to slow down and stop. And that's not enough distance. I see that a lot. That's a big problem. That's a good way to get yourself killed. So... Be careful when you're positioning your car that you're not pointing your headlights directly at the people that you're trying to direct the traffic of because you're going to blind them. They can't see you. If they can't see you, they can't follow your instructions. And a lot of the incidents where I see of cops getting hit or with people getting screamed at and yelled at because they weren't following what the cops' directions were, especially at night, is that we have poor scene dynamics going on where people literally can't see what you're trying to tell them to do. Proper equipment is, of course, important. Uh, you're not going to want to use your flashlight. You're going to want to use some sort of traffic wand or traffic cone if you can. If you can't, you want to shine the flashlight somewhere where people are going to see the flashlight. Very often pointing it at the ground and swooping it around where you want people to go. They can follow the dot on the ground, but if you point it at them and then the direction they want to go, they have no idea what you're showing them. All they see is a light shining at them and then not shining at them anymore because you just blinded them and then taken the light away. So now they're blind and driving at you and they don't they have no idea what you're talking about. So be cognizant of what the situation looks like from people down there. When you're first starting to do this, a good thing to do is once you set up and you're starting to direct traffic, see if you have the opportunity when traffic slows down to go stand out here and see what people are seeing when they're driving at you. That could be a great way, especially after the incident or once you've got it settled down, start understanding what people are seeing so that the next time you set up for it, it makes more sense. Also, you need to plan ahead. A big problem with traffic scenes, especially traffic accidents, is not planning ahead. Specifically, placing the squad car somewhere where traffic is not liable to flow, where, where we're trying to flow people in a direction that doesn't make sense to them, that they're not comfortable with. You have to understand that the public drives every day and they're only comfortable with a certain subset of things that you're asking them to do. We get this impression because we're used to making U-turns on the interstate or we're used to making uh, left-hand turns from the right-hand lane that people are going to be comfortable merging down and making the left-hand turn off the highway or turning left off of traffic. As a general rule, turning people right into a neighborhood or into a, a rural road that's going to, you know, square around a block and come back onto a street is always better than turning people left, even if you're turning them left onto a major street. Let's say our circumstance here, we're on Interstate Highway, we've got 
a bad traffic wreck here. You know, here's here's what's left of two mangled cars. We've got cars coming at them, and we're the first officer on scene coming up over here. A lot of people would be tempted to park their squad blocking this lane of traffic and directing people either to stop and stopping traffic here or you turning people to go the opposite direction, especially if it's not an interstate highway, if it's just a major street, just having people stop there. When you have people stop there, you have to understand if there's nowhere else to go, their inclination is going to be to make a U-turn. What that's going to cause is a situation where we've got traffic coming this way that's going to be having collisions with them. So now we've got not just this one collision we're dealing with, but we've got collisions over here because you've got people making U-turns crashing into each other. And of course, they're not going to make a U-turn at the one place you tell them to make a U-turn or where it's convenient to make a U-turn. They're going to be making U-turns for half a mile, a mile, two miles back when this starts to back up. So be aware of that. Just blocking the lane of traffic is generally not the best solution. A better solution to situations like this is to block the lane of traffic in such a way where not only does it give people an out where they can turn right, which in right-hand drive countries is generally the, the way you want to go. People are a lot more comfortable turning right, even if it's onto a smaller street. They're going to work their way around, get back on the highway. You're going to have fewer collisions from people turning right off the road and finding their own way than trying to direct them. But also it creates a situation where we aren't directing the traffic. In, in an ideal world, we don't want to be directing traffic ourselves. We don't want to be out there with the orange vest, with the cone, trying to get people to go a direction. We want to set the scene up in such a way where it directs itself, where people see it and go, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. So as the first officer on scene in a situation like this, an ideal setup would be to park the squad on a diagonal, turn on the minimal number of lights that we need in order for people to see, yes, it's the police, so we don't need the wig wagging high beams. We don't need the Opticon running. That's a little, that's a little fast flashy light that screws with all of the traffic lights. It allows squads to go through it. It turns them green. You don't want that running all the time. Turn that down to where all we've got is the reds or blues or reds and blues on the top of the car running. And then when people drive up, they see a squad parked at a diagonal that is funneling them into the side street. Now, if we have cones, we can put traffic cones out that direct people toward that side street. Now if we do this, we don't have to stand out in the middle of the road and tell people to make a left-hand turn or tell people to make a U-turn or fight with people who want to come around. They're going to see this, they see the cones or maybe crime scene tape. You run crime scene tape from over here to this corner. And then all we have to do is man this point in the future to allow fire trucks and paramedics through which is really easy to do. We can stay in the car, we can back the car up, or we can stand over here where it's safer. We can hop over, back the car up, move the crime scene tape, or move some cones, let the fire trucks in, and then close it right back off again. And everyone that's driving up sees a line of crime scene tape, a squad car, or cones, and it's directing them into that side street where all anybody has to do is come up, and they go, oh, there's nowhere to go, I guess I'm turning right. And that's what you want. You want a situation where, without having to tell anybody anything, they get the cues from traffic of where to go. Now finally, when you are working in traffic, you need to understand how reflectivity works. Reflectives do not work, and we've gone over this on the channel before, I'll put some, some links up there. Reflectives do not work if there aren't lights shining directly at them. If the car is not heading directly at you, if their headlights are not pointed directly at you, the reflective stuff that you're, you're wearing does not do anything. The reflective is not as bright as actual lights on cars. So while the reflectives work fine over here, if somebody's driving straight at you, the people that are driving at you can't see you if you're over here with the reflectives because their headlights are not shining directly at you. They've already started that turn. That's a big problem. Another big problem for guys who decide they're going to stand over here at the apex of this turn. They're driving, the headlights are shining directly forward, they don't see you until they're already in the turn because the reflectives that you're wearing are not bouncing light back until their headlights hit you. So you have to be mindful of that as well. So hopefully that gives you a good primer on how to not get run over and how to set a scene up ideally 
in a very common situation that we have in traffic where we're trying to direct traffic around an incident. I understand sometimes we're not going to have a convenient side street there. Uh, this is just an example of a convenient side street for the size of the whiteboard. If you're out in a rural area or if you're in a city where, that has an express where the closest exit is further down the road, what you do is you block traffic off the way I showed it first where we're going to try to make people make a U-turn and you radio in for somebody to go that mile back down the road and block it off, send people off on a side street so we're not dealing with this all day. Remember, ideally, we don't want to be directing traffic. We want traffic to direct itself. We want to be able to just set up a scene where it makes sense off the road. And if that means we have to do it half a mile that way or four blocks that way or five miles that way down the road before the scene so we minimize the amount of time we have to do this, that's that's great. That's what we want to do is we want to set it up and send somebody further down the road and have them set the same type of thing up to get people off the street. We'd rather have a street that we don't have to direct traffic on at all than be fighting with people all day to direct them a certain to a certain way that we want them to go. That's not something that they would ordinarily do or something that most people aren't comfortable with. Most people aren't comfortable with making a U-turn on an interstate. All right, so hopefully we got some topical comments and questions down on the YouTube and Instagram live streams. I'm gonna take a couple of those. Then we're gonna do the giveaways and uh, show you what the new giveaways are. In fact, you know what? We're gonna do a giveaway right now. Uh, we're gonna do a $100 gift certificate to Safe Life Defense. I'm going to do it over on the Instagram live stream. Over on the Instagram live stream, we are going to give away the $100 gift certificate to Safe Life Defense for the first person that can put in the comments uh, what my coupon code is for Safe Life Defense. Since it's not listed on Instagram, it's whoever brings it up first in their mind. Let's see. Instagram live stream, what is my coupon code for Safe Life Defense? How do you get 10% off? All right. Gracie's Daddy 3113 said it is FFT10. FFT10, Gracie's Daddy 313. Hold on, I'm going to screenshot that so I don't forget. Send me a DM on Instagram and I will send you the coupon code for $100 off at Safe Life Defense. All right, so we'll go to the YouTube live stream, see if we've got some comments and questions. Oh, we've got a super chat. So we're going to take the super chat first. Uh, Freshman Rule sent five dollars to the donut fund. Thank you very much, Freshman Rule. Says watching on my lunch break at the police academy right now. Well, you should be eating lunch and talking with everybody else at your police academy if that's where you're at right now. But I'm I'm glad you're interested enough in the topic that you're willing to take another class while you're there taking classes. Uh, Garrison Sims says could have used this on the Fourth of July. LOL. This is still a weak point for me. Thanks for making this very thoughtful. If this is a weak point for you, what I suggest is you go to traffic accident scenes, especially if you're already on the job. Go to scenes that other officers are taking care of and just drive at them like your normal traffic and see what people are seeing when you're doing it. Don't just copy what other officers are doing or what your department trains you to do, which might be things that just, oh, this is the way we've always done it. Go out there, drive in traffic, through the bad traffic, and see what it looks like when people come up and say, oh, you know what, that doesn't make sense, or hey, that's something that does make sense, and that's how you're going to get good at doing this type of thing, is seeing what traffic is seeing, and what makes sense, and what doesn't from their perspective. Then when you try new things, try to go over there and see how it looks to see whether what you're doing is working or not. Sedan 57 Chevy says, hey, you're live, glad to catch you, great information as always. My addition is to make sure your hand signals are always visible. Depending on lighting condition, if it's a dark, find a light source. Very, very good point. Let's talk about that just a little bit. Uh, some things like this. We've got these reflective gloves. 221B sent me a long time ago. All right. These are great for certain things. They've got reflectivity on one side. You can also find gloves sometimes. They've got like a stop sign on the front. I don't know how well the stop sign works. I don't know if it's reflective or not. I've only seen them online. But these have, they've got orange or the, the lime green on one side and then reflective on the other. So when light is shining directly at them, they reflect back. And then on the back, there's a reflective stripe. You can see there, and a bunch of lime green. Whoop. These are great uh, for people being able to see your hands, but again, if you're at this apex point, people aren't gonna see you hand waving when you're out there. Traffic wands are great. They make it a lot easier for people to see what you're directing them to do. 
If you're directing people over here though, you need to be somewhere where they are going to see the traffic wand. So if you're standing in front of the car with the overhead lights behind you, they are not going to see the traffic wand. Oh, they're going to... Ooh. They are not going to see the traffic wand. All they're going to see is the lights flashing from behind you and you're going to be a dark silhouette. That's a big problem. If you're over here, that's where this really comes into play. If you're at the apex of the turn here again, where people's headlights are not seeing you, the gloves with reflectivity on them, your reflective vest, they don't do a lot of good. But things that put out active light, traffic wand, a uh, flashlight on the ground, just taking your flashlight and pointing it you know, up toward, and you don't want to point it in the eyes of people, but toward the hood of their car, so they see they get a little bit of it, and then around and the direction you want them to go. And I like to shut it off in between so they get boop, and that way, boop, and that way. Also, we can do the old turn the light on, point it again toward the hood, not in people's eyes, but toward the hood so they get a little flash, and then toward our arm. So people can see, oh, that's the direction I'm going. So we get a traffic signal, a direction with our hands that people can actually see. A big problem, and I think what 57 Chevy is trying to say is if we have black gloves on, and it's dark out, and we have our, our black uh, butt-kicking gloves on, I've got two right hand gloves here. If we've got our black gloves on and we are directing traffic at night with our dark blue uniform, people can't see what it is we're doing because you see how the glove washes out even over patches. People's eyes aren't, they don't have that type of visual acuity. Like if you're doing this and you're wearing black and there's a black glove, and imagine now if my arms were covered in black or dark blue and it's nighttime and there's a black car behind me. Right, or a black roadway behind me. People can't see what this is. They don't know what it is. It could, look, what does it look like? It looks like my, my forearms pulsating from their perspective. You have to remember people see things only from 2D, especially at night. Uh, 50, Sedan 57 Chevy says, don't, tr don't try to make hand signals over your head. The flashing lights on your Explorer make it impossible to see what you're trying to gesture. Yeah, this type of stuff is generally not real helpful. Like you just end up looking like a monkey in the middle of the road dancing around, waving your arms, that, that type, this type of thing, that's not, that's not doing anything, other than make you look silly. Uh, Daniel DJ in audio says, do you think you could do something that a firefighter would use for directing traffic? Well, that's simple. Firefighters have an enormous advantage over cops in directing traffic. I'll explain why. It's probably not for the reasons that most people would think, although hopefully most firefighters would think of this. I don't know. I don't deal with a lot of volunteer fire departments. I've heard bad things, though, about some of them, so let's go over it. See, if you're a cop, you've got a, a squad car. Uh, most likely, in the United States right now, something like a Ford Explorer or maybe an older Taurus. Firefighters have a few advantages. One is that they're covered in reflective. They're covered in, you know, things that look like this. Uh, they've got command staff already on scene, so there's somebody on scene with a fire department whose job is to take command of the situation and start directing things. And that's a huge advantage with any situation, but setting up scenes, this type of, of scene directing traffic, it's huge. Here's their big advantage though. Their truck weighs about seven metric tons. And it's covered with flashing lights all over it. Now I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying I have never seen anybody hit a fire truck hard enough where they moved it, ever. I've seen people hit squads and spin the squad around. So if you're directing traffic and you're on the other side of your squad, you're safer, but you're not super safe because if somebody hits it, the squad can move. If you're this side of the fire truck, somebody hits that, unless it's a semi or like a cement truck or something or a garbage truck, that fire truck isn't gonna move an inch it's going to laugh at most passenger cars hitting it. So with fire departments, especially if you're new on a fire department, your safest thing to do is just to be upstream of the fire truck, right? Or sorry, downstream of the fire truck. You want to be over here. This is a really safe area. Uh, if you've only got one engine that's on scene, very often they'll park it diagonally to, to block traffic. But you know, if you've ever been to a scene, you know that you know troopers get really pissed at fire departments because they'll block the whole road. You know, the fire department will pull up and they'll, they'll block, they'll put a fire truck here and they'll put a fire truck here and they'll put an ambulance over here and then they'll park another fire truck over here. And now this, 
this road is like down to one lane. This road's completely blocked. You, these people can't get out. You're going to have to send somebody half a mile down the road to turn people around and get them out of here. The advantage of this for fire departments, because they've got these very large heavy vehicles with lots of flashing lights on them, is if you're the dude that's over here, you know, using the jaws of life, or you're the guys that are over here waiting for those victims to get extracted from the car so you can put them in your ambulance and drive off with them, you're fairly safe over there because people, I mean, I guess they could try. I've seen people try to drive between fire trucks, but as a general rule, somebody at 70 miles an hour is just going to come clip the firefighter because they've blocked the scene off with all of this heavy equipment. Uh, Stephen Allwell says, you also got to remember that most people are more interested in looking at the incident than the guy directing traffic. So you've got to pay attention to them. This is something I bring up to motorcyclists all the time. The laws of man might say you have the right of way, but the laws of physics say you don't have a steel cage around your butt. That is a very, very good point. People, when they're coming up to accident scenes, they don't care about you directing traffic. In fact, normally they scream obscenities at you out the window when you tell them to go a certain direction or they want to stop and tell you, well, this is the only way. I only know how to go that way. I only know that direction. They're not interested in what you're saying. All they want to see is the wreck over here. So as they're driving past, if you've got your squad out here, as they're driving past, they're not paying attention to you or the traffic cones they want to see around. They're driving and they'll drive over here and they'll slow down a whole lot so they can see past your squad and see what's going on. And then they'll speed up and then they'll drive over here and they'll slow down or they'll stop over here so they can see what's going on. You have to be aware of that. They're not looking for you. And again, that's why I always stress to people, whenever I've got somebody new in the squad, I stress to them, please, for the love of God, set up your accident scenes so that you don't have to man this checkpoint if you can. So you don't have to be standing out here where you can get hit. Set it up so that people can just leave the roadway and you don't have to interact with them at all. I would much rather, it's not ideal, but I would much rather this person stop to look at the accident scene and get rear-ended than this person just drive over you when you're sitting at the apex of this, this, curtain, this turn here. I'd rather they get rear-ended by somebody else because they stopped to look at the accident scene than hit you because you're standing at the apex of the curb. Again, remember what I said. That's a dangerous place to stand. If you have to stand there, you've got to be on your toes about it. Mason Weisenberger says, So I'm a bicycle blocker for our group of 100-plus riders, and we have been told by our state police that we are able to stop traffic. Do you have any tips or tricks? Here, let me give you a tip. Remember what I said about physics, right? The law might say that you can try to block traffic with a bicycle and direct people to go other directions, but the laws of physics say that that's a terrible idea. You need to be out of the way of the big moving cars. I know that hurts some people's feelings. I know it hurts motorcyclists' feelings. I know it hurts bicyclists' feelings. But if you don't want to end up getting being a splat on the road, if you don't want to be the reason that I get to use this logo, the, the guy with the, the legs all messed up, you know, laying on the ground in the pool of his own blood, if you don't want to be that logo on my next accident report, I highly recommend that you try not to direct traffic standing in the middle of the road as someone who's never done it before with a bicycle. So, now that we've got all of that out of the way, let's do our giveaway for the uh, Olight Fryer. We do that uh, YouTube Live. What should we do for the giveaway for the Olight Fryer on the YouTube Live? The Olight Fryer, as I said in the video, up there is a bad police duty light, but it is a police duty light that is also a traffic wand, which makes good sense given this video. Let's see. Ah, on the YouTube Live for the Olight Fryer, for our giveaway. Put in the comments, what multi-tool was it in the Olight Fryer video that I compared to this? I said, this is like a multi-tool. It's like my, what multi-tool was it? And then whoever wins can send me an email or a DM. Kelly P. Smith just sent 
five dollars for the donut fund and didn't ask anything. Nice to know. Ah, Leather in a Wave, yes. Uh, Spencer Hunter. Send me an email, freefieldtraining at gmail.com. Do it right now, and we will get that shipped out to you. So YouTube says we're going to do the YouTube giveaway first. Of course they would. We're going to mix them up a little bit. Let me pull them out. I'm just going to show you guys that these are all different. So there's one. It's Larry Travis on it. There's another one. It says Roger B on it. And we'll pull out another one here. Random. It just says JC on it. All right. I'm going to draw this. This is the winner of the YouTube, the Shield Box giveaway with the O-Lights and the Moto T-shirt and the multi-tool and the zip cuffs and all of that. I only have one of them. And the winner of that is Colleen Wayne. I'm sure I can focus on that there. Colleen Wayne. That is our winner for that shield box. Get that in there so I don't forget. So, Colleen Wayne, send me an email, freefieldtraining at gmail.com. We will get that shipped out to you. And the Instagram giveaway from last month, I've got that box right here. The Instagram giveaway for last month was the sling bag here and the LA Police Gears uh, duty box set. So, a duty belt box set. So, it's a belt with everything except a double mag pouch and holster, so it's basically great for unarmed security or if you're going to be trying to move up in the world, you can add a holster and double mag pouch to this if you want to get into armed security. But for a lot of people, this is, again, I think it's like 50 bucks. It's a really good entry level duty belt setup. This one is in a size medium. I'm sorry, I just kind of picked whatever size I figured would most fit the people that are going to be entering the giveaway. So here is our cutouts. For the Instagram giveaway, show you that they are all different. There's Dr. Cameron, grab another one at random here. Sofalo 4.6. I don't know what a Sofalo 4.6 is, but it's interesting. And we'll grab another one here at random. Awesome Olsen. All right. We're going to throw those in there, mix them up, and we're picking a winner. It's a winner for all that stuff. I'm not shipping out multiple boxes of things. We're going to send it all to one person. Alvarez, uh, J. A. Alvarez, J. A. Alvarez. I don't know if you can see that there. J. A. Alvarez, J. A. Alvarez. Put that with this, so I don't lose it. And then this month, over on Instagram, as soon as this final video goes live on YouTube, I'm going to have a shield box. And you can win it. We have the uh, June Shield Box over on, on uh, Instagram. There, We have the June Shield Box over on Instagram. So there's a Shield Box giveaway on Instagram and on YouTube. Uh, the June Shield Box is... Right here, it is a minor burn first aid kit. Shieldbox, of course, is a subscription service that you pay about 50 bucks a month for it. It sends you cool tactical equipment. 
So the June Shield box is that. We're giving away on Instagram. A uh, tactically suited reflective police patch. The Peltor, Peltor Sport Ear Pro. A listen only earpiece for a 3.5 millimeter jack, so it works with most portable radios. A monocular from Carson. And a US Peacekeeper, like a small pistol rod. So that is over, going to be over on Instagram. That's what Shieldbox sent out in June. There's going to be a picture. It's going to be this picture. Just go over there, follow the directions over on Instagram for the giveaway. And next month, we will pick one person for that. And on YouTube, we are going to be giving away... Oh, gotta put that back in there. I have a feeling there's going to be lots of editing with this video. On YouTube, we are giving away the July Shield Box. And in it, this month, you uh, on there, see if you can freeze frame that and see what's inside. Freeze it later on. Got a back the blue sticker. Got a mug in here. Take this apart so you guys can see. They really wrapped the crap out of this. Oh, it's a mug from Hollow Point Coffee Company. By the way, Hollow Point Coffee Company, link and coupon code down in the description if you want to save some money on coffee. We've got a discount card for Hollow Point Coffee Company. I can't show it to you because then everyone would have the... I don't know if that's an individual code. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's like a magnet mount, like a pistol magnet mount from 1350 Apparel. Let's see, what is this supposed to be? A quick draw gun magnet from 1350 Apparel. That's this. Got a Sam Splint. Always nice to have a little extra bed around. And a small light to check pupil dilation. And a 511 knife, a fixed blade knife. That's pretty cool. And when those, when this video finally goes live on YouTube, not this live stream video, but when the final video goes, all you gotta do is leave a comment. I don't care if it's positive, negative, you call me a pig, I, I don't care what it is. Just put a comment in there for the algorithm for me, right? Like it and subscribe too while you're at it. I could use the help. But any comment, put it in there, doesn't matter. We're gonna cut out the names. I won't even know what the comment is when it's all said and done, just like we did for last month. And we'll draw one out and that person wins. Of course, you have to be over 18. All the stuff that's in here has to be legal for you to own and for me to ship to you and yada, yada, yada. Full rules down in the description. Uh, I'm going to check and see if we have any more comments. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made. Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.